Well, the first thing that I would say is with my brother's a twin brother, and uh, um, he doesn't look anything like me. He's six feet tall, and he weighs the same as I do. So, um, <laughs> but what, what's interesting, I actually called him last night, and I said, last chance, if you have any comments, let me know what you thought about growing up and what you think about your own Hapa identity. And um, what's really interesting and what came out of our discussion was that um, uh, a sense, a strong sense of Hapa identity, at least d when you compare me and my brother, um, has to do with other people's perceptions of you and how they try to categorize you or how they... Um, so the constant questions, identity questions to me, um, forced me to come to terms with it and to tend to, uh, to realize that, that, um, that Hapa-ness is largely what you make of it, you know. And my brother, who really looks much more like my father, um, much more Caucasian, never got the question of what are you. And in terms of his own Hapa identity, one of the questions that he's always dealt with is, um, is am I a fraud in reclaiming my Japanese-American identity? Um, he always felt like, in, in our taiko drums class, he always felt like he was going to be seen as the white guy who was the wannabe. And um, so this is something, though, that he's still dealing with now, whereas for me, the, the question emerged much earlier because I look so much like my mother and my grandmother, and also because my middle name is a Japanese middle name, and people always w were very, very curious about it, whereas my brother uh, doesn't have a Japanese name. Um, so it's something that I had to come to terms with, and for me, this is, this is precisely the reason why I'm, I'm in theology, because the question of religion was so, it, it sort of heightened all of these issues of, well, are my grandparents going to hell? That doesn't sound right. Uh, you know, they're a lot holier than the people who sit, you know, the people who sit two pews down from me. Um, so it's, it's something, I think, in some ways, being so isolated um, made me reclaim it, because if, if I couldn't reclaim it, then I was going to be kind of a fragmented individual. So, um, but it's something that, that happened early on in my early teens because I felt the pressure of what are you, and so how do I categorize myself, and, and uh, coming to recognize that, that worlds racial, ethnic, religious worlds are not exclusive and that these boundaries are, are not rigid, that we, we pass over and cross boundaries all the time. And in fact, that strategy of hapaness for me is, is incredibly helpful in my professional life. Um, and I think it, it is helpful, going back to the Obama thing, I think it's helpful in, in his life, being able to kind of cross over between worlds and talk in multiple discourses kind of an awareness of being Hapa, in my town anyway, it was just lily white. But then I can remember too, the same kind of feeling going off base as a kid living in Japan. So it was like, you had it coming from both sides. But to be, I think, maybe in your 20s now and being so much more aware of that and embracing that, growing up with it as a really, even a cool thing, um, I think that's great to have. So I moved back. I spent a lot of years overseas as an adult. And when I moved to Seattle in 98, that was one of the things listed in the, the, the Seattle Weekly newspaper there. One of the, the, the trends was to be, uh, to be a hapa. I thought, how can that be a trend? You know, it was always trendy at my house. I grew up in Canada, and uh, my mother is Filipina. My father's South Asian. He's Pakistani, but our roots go back to India. And uh, growing up, I actually identified with being more South Asian, and all of my friends were South Asian growing up, and it could have been just you know the community we were in. But uh, I went away to Hawaii for grad school, and as you may know, there's a huge Filipino population. And so all of a sudden, I embraced that, and I became really, really involved. Well, now that we're going to be in California, what are you going to be then? 
<laughs> and, and so I had this crisis of coming back to the mainland thinking, okay, who am I going to be and what community am I going to work with? And um, I actually ended up at a Filipino organization. And it's interesting because I, I find I can go both ways. I, I, I fit in both and I, I'm completely, uh, completely comfortable. Like I have henna on because I have a festival going on. and So I can do that and I feel like, you know, by being there, I, I can be an example of that and talking about organizing and, and being open about it. Um, and we actually have a Filipino school and we're trying to help kids teach, uh, help them learn Tagalog. And I'm finding that a good maybe one third to a half of them are actually Hapa kids. They're mixed kids. And, and I think by being there, it's, it's helpful because their parents feel comfortable um, seeing that, okay, well, look, the administrators, she's also mixed. And so, like, I see this happening, and I, I just really appreciated hearing each of your examples about parenting, about organizing, about, you know, um, growing up in different places, because I, I think those are things that we, each of us have experienced uh, being multiracial, but you captured it so well, and, and uh, I just wanted to say thanks for, for sharing that. I think that having the HAPA community or HAPA presence in the community does, it also reminds us that we're linked to other communities of color or other communities. Um, you know, as um, Felina Houston says, Rika's older sister in one of her plays, that, you know, or, or when she talks about how things, once our families joined, Jap the Japanese American history and joined with the African American history. <laughs> that we begin to share a history. I mean, in, in our bodies, you know, when I, I talk with my, uh, in my classes on Asian American studies, when I talk about Asian America, and what, you know, who's Asian American, what is Asian America, there's, cer there's certainly the idea of population and number counts or idea of a political identity, but we're starting to see also Asian American and, and the sort of a different Asian American actually in the bodies of folks like you, South Asian and Filipino, that mix, that, that eight, so that there's this, you know, we have multiple identities. We don't have to be fixed with a single identity of being only one. We can be either and instead of either or. And that's one of the real excitements about um, what I think we add to and what we bring to the table when we embrace all of our othernesses. Um, I'm actually going to a conference next week, and it's an Asian American uh, organization, and they have this caucus group. Um, and so I looked, and they're all at the same time. I had a choice of being Japan, uh, sorry, uh, South Asian, uh, multiracial, or uh, Filipino, and I can't attend all three. <laughs> and so I, I and, and it's funny because my workshop is going to be on being multiracial, and I thought, well, gosh, you know, the way this is set up, I can't even be that. Um, so do you have any comments about how to help? you know, change the structures of how things are organized? Take the first whack oh, at that. I'll just say that it happens all the time. Yeah. All the time. It, it, it may be a state of being. I think as we come on boards and we become part of planning groups for conferences and stuff, that's where this issue of representation comes out, where we can, can represent those issues that, um, that force a false choice, right? Um, but in terms of, uh, in terms of how that's going to pull you and push you, I mean, I'm doing the APA graduation next Friday night, and then I'll do the African American graduation. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I have to do double, right? And I love it, and I got lots of really good food. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, you do double. I mean, it, you know, in, in, in Japan, uh, um, and Teresa and I were, were able to, to be a part of this movie called Doubles. You know, this, this, this term that says we're not half of anything, we're double. Right, and sometimes triple, <laughs> or quadruple, or is it? But, but you know, but we 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 don't have to be a part of anything. We can be all of whatever. And so when we're when we're in those positions, right, of of uh, engagement in our organizations and, and and getting on those planning groups, getting on those uh, uh, program committees, so that you can point out the sort of choices that that you're forcing people to make, and sometimes you can't get out of it, but, but I found that when you do that, people respond generally rather well. Um, and, and yeah, and, but you do have to get used to being sometimes the only voice pushing the issue, you know, unfortunately. <laughs>